call the meeting to order for the Lycomico County Council Legislative Session 2023-01 for January 3rd, 2023. Uh, call the meeting to order, entertain a motion from council to convene and close work session. Hang on one second. To adjourn from uh, open session to go into a closed work session pursuant to the local government article section 3-305B8 to consult with staff, consul con consultants, or other individuals about pending or potential litigation to protect the county's legal position. So, Motion, please. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. I'm going to uh, close session. Okay. 2023, the Lycoming County Council, those that like to stand and join us in the Lord's Prayer and Pledge of Allegiance, please do. Our Father, Our Father who Lord art in heaven, heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, and give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. to the United States of America. And to the Republic for religious hands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, good evening. Entertain a motion from council to approve the legislative minutes from December 20th, 2022. To move. Second. Second. Any discussions or corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried, minutes are approved. This time we now have a procl proclamation to recognize National Mentoring Month. Uh, Miss Leanne, oh boy, I didn't preview this. <laughs> Peposar? Okay, Peposar? She's not here. Is that the correct <laughs> pronunciation? That is the correct pronunciation. Thank you. Tyler Phillips, I was here last year, also did both of sisters. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Uh, Yes, yes. Left out. Councilman Merritt will uh, be reading the proclamation for you. Thanks for being here. Good evening, everybody. Proclamation National Mentoring Month. Whereas during National Mentoring Month, we celebrate the dedicated men and women who volunteer their time, talents, and resources to mentor, teach, and empower young people and those in need of guidance. And whereas mentors come from diverse backgrounds and improve the lives of America's youth, helping them to grow into responsible adults, and whereas in Wicomico County and across our country, mentors serve not only as role models for young people, but also as an inspiration to dream big and pursue any goal regardless of circumstance, and whereas these acts of generosity and compassion are a reminder that each of us has a deeper purpose and can make a positive difference in the lives of our youth. Now, therefore, in recognition of the numerous contributions made by mentors in Wicomico County, be it resolved that the Wicomico County Executive and the Wicomico County Council hereby proclaim January 2023 as National Mentoring Month. Done this day, 3rd of January, 2023. No need. Uh, it's been a long day. You know. um, my name is Tyler Phillips from Big Brothers Big Sisters of the Eastern Shore. Uh, I was also here for this last year. And um, I just want to thank the Wicomico County Council again for uh, this recognition. Um, to keep it short, we're always in need of mentors in Wicomico as well as across the other counties. Uh, on the Eastern Shore, we cover all nine from Cecil all the way down to Somerset over to Worcester. Um, so if you know anybody who is looking to mentor or somebody whose child who may be in need of mentoring, please do not hesitate to give us uh, your contact information or their contact information so we can try to uh, help them out, get them pointed in the right direction and make them believe in their potential. Um, shorebiglittle.org, or if you're walking downtown, we have a big sign on the thing right next to WMVT. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the good work you did.
Good evening. Good evening, Council President, Council Members, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the first item on the agenda this evening is a public hearing on the Capital Improvement Program for the county for the period of July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2028 in the capital budget for fiscal year 2024. Mr. President, with your permission, I'll read each department and the totals through fiscal year 28, if that is okay. If you don't mind. Um, I was uh, remiss. I did not um, introduce uh, our superintendent, Stauffer. Glad to have you here. Uh, Board of Education, Beecham, glad to have you here as well. Delegate Carl Anderton. Uh, we have our state's attorney, Jamie Dykes, here. Then we have our county executive, Giordano, here tonight. Did I miss anybody? Okay, thank you. Okay. Sorry, thank there you. are copies of the capital improvement summary page on the table as you walk in the door for those in the audience that would like to follow along. Once I'm finished reading the totals by the department, the council president will open the floor for the public hearing. Starting with the general fund, we have the sheriff's office at 2,336,000. Health department, $680,000. Emergency services, 23,575,000. Elections, 1 million. Corrections, 4,467,000. General services, 1650000 Public library, $2,615,400. Warwick Community College, $6,539,888. Board of Education, $33,288,600. Public Works Engineering, $6,150,000. Public Works Roads, $6,150,000. Civic Center, $14,942,500. Recreation and Parks, $28,960,991. In our Enterprise Funds, we have Public Works Solid Waste at $18,310,000. Tourism, $480,000. An airport at $45,340,150. The total for all funds is $196,485,529. Mr. President. Thank you. Do you have any comments that you'd like to make or concerns in regard to um, the areas that uh, Mrs. Hurley just mentioned? Please come to the podium, state your name, your county of residence, and your concerns. Okay, seeing none. <coughs> that concludes the public hearing on the capital improvement program for fiscal years 2024 through 2028. Ms. Hurley? Next is a public hearing on resolution number 01-2023. This is authorizing the county executive to accept a revised grant agreement from the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development through the Community Development Block Grant Program for the repurposing of grant funds. This is CDBG CV 216 grant. This is approved by resolution 98-2020 in the approximate amount of 250,000 in CDBG funds for community service projects in response to COVID-19 for Mac Incorporated to serve low to moderate income families in Wacomico County. And we have Mr. Jesse Drewer, the community development planner here to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Hurley. At this time, we uh, open the floor for a public hearing on resolution number 01-2023. If you have any comments you'd like to make in reference to this resolution, please come to the podium, state your name, your county of residence, and your concern. Seeing none, that concludes the public hearing on resolution number 01-2023. Entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 01-2023. Entertain a motion. So move. Second. 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 Discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, if you could state for the public your name. So, thank you. Thank Billy Giordano, County Executive. Jesse Drewer, I'm the Community Development Planner. Thank you very much. 
So in passing around and going in front of everybody is just a quick update for expenses where we stand for this grant. This grant's been before this council uh, two times in the past. It was originally an emergency rental assistance grant put together in 2020 when COVID was still a, really a major issue. If you notice on the sheet, looking quickly through it, Salisbury Neighborhood Housing was a recipient of this grant. They spent $148,000 and some change with this grant. It's since been repurposed to three other community organizations. And as required by the Community Development Block Grant Program, we're looking to add another organization to this grant to help us expend the funds by the deadline. We're looking to add uh, Maintaining Active Citizens, MAC Inc., for $250,000, and I believe it's in the briefing book. They're requesting an additional $250,000 to assist the Meals on Wheels program for people seniors 60 and over who are shut in due to COVID <coughs> issues with that. And to date, we are awarded $900,000. We have to expend that by June 30th, 2023. To date, we've spent $273,739. And with this expense from MAC, it'll help us get quicker towards our expenditure deadlines. Questions? All those in favor of resolution 01-2023, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motions carried. Resolution passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, the next item for business is resolution number 02-2023. This is to authorize a continuation of an appeal of a circuit court order in the Michael Bowers versus State of Maryland et al. Civil case number C22CV220095 and Samuel Workman versus State of Maryland et al. Civil case number C2BCB2200229. And we have Mr. Paul Wilbur here, our county attorney, if there are any questions. Okay, motion from council to approve resolution 02 2023. To move. Second. second. We have a motion, second. Discussion. A uh, motion to uh, postpone. There is a motion to postpone. Uh, is, uh, there is no second on a motion to postpone. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motions carried. Resolution 02-2023 will be postponed until the next uh, county council meeting on uh, January 17th? Yes. 17th, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, the next item um, is the submission of an appointment to the School Building Commission, an appointment to the Agriculture Preservation Advisory Board, and an appointment to the Wacomico County Commission for Women. In accordance with Charter Section 315, the County Executive has submitted the names of three individuals for the Council's confirmation. For the benefit of our new council members and the audience members, the School Building Commission assists the County School Board in planning, building construction, rehabilitation, and maintenance projects. They also audit building design, specifications, and contracts prepared by architects and or contractors to determine the best technical and most practical approaches for the benefit of the community. The Agriculture Preservation Board meets in response to applications for formation of an Agriculture Preservation District. The Advisory Board reviews the applications for compliance and makes recommendations to the County Council on the merit of each application. The Commission on Women is a nonpartisan organization dedicated to enriching the lives of women and families by focusing on issues of importance and concerns to them, including education, economic opportunities, health care, social issues, and legislation. The Commission advocates for women and advises the county executive and county government on all areas of concern. Next on the agenda is the consent agenda for the boards and commissions. And on that consent agenda, we have resolution number 03-2023, confirming the appointment of Philip Marshall Wells as a member of the Wacomico County Agricultural Preservation Advisory Board. Resolution number 04-2023, confirming the appointment of Jared A. Shelton as a member of the School Building Commission. And resolution number 05-2023, confirming the appointment of Megan Alton as a member of the Wacomico County Commission for Women. Entertain uh, a motion from council to approve the consent agenda for the board's and commission appointment. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? No. Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Consent agenda is, is approved. 
Next for your consideration is resolution number 06-2023, confirming the appointment of Thomas Bunky Luffman Jr. as Director of Administration. In motion from council to approve resolution 06-2023. So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried, resolution passes. Next is resolution number 07-2023, confirming the appointment of Donna Pierce O'Hara as Director of the Department of Human Resources. Entertain a motion from Council to approve resolution number 07-2023. So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried, resolution passes. Next is resolution number 08-2023, confirming the appointment of Lorenzo R. Cropper as Director of the Department of Emergency Services. Can a motion to approve resolution 08-2023? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Any discussion? Aye. I'm sorry. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Resolution passes. Next is resolution number 09-2023, confirming the appointment of Christopher D. Hopkins as Deputy Director of the Department of Emergency Services. I understand a motion to approve resolution 09-2023. So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Resolution passes. Next is resolution number 10-2023, confirming the reappointment of Pamela B. Olin as Director of the Department of Finance. So moved. Can a motion approve resolution 10-2023? <laughs> so moved. Mm -hmm. We have a motion. Second. Second. All, uh, any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion is carried. Resolution 10-2023 passes. <laughs> Next is resolution number 11-2023, confirming the reappointment of Stephen E. Miller as Director of the Department of Recreation, Parks, and Tourism. I a motion from Council to approve resolution number 11-2023. So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Resolution passes. <laughs> Next is resolution number 12-2023, confirming the reappointment of Anthony M. Rudy, AAE, as Director of the Department of Aviation. Entertain a motion to approve resolution 12-2023. So moved. Second. Second. Any, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Resolution passes. I would like to say before we go to the next resolution, I'd like to uh, thank all those who are newly appointed and congratulate all of you who are newly appointed and those who have uh, been reappointed. Yes, very much so. <laughs> We're very much looking forward to working with, with each and every one of you. Thank you, Ms. Hurley. Uh, Mr. President, if we can go back to um, resolution number... Um, 02-2023. I didn't get the um, who made the motions for the postponement. If we could review that again. James. Wynn. James Wynn did. Okay. Do we have a second on that? Don't need a second. Not required. There was, as I have no second required for postponement. Okay. That's why I didn't have it written down. Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. So um, next for your consideration is resolution number 13-2023. This is designating persons for training under the Open Meetings Act. State law requires each public body to designate at least one individual who is an employee or a member of the public body to receive training on the requirements of the Open Meetings Law. This resolution is designating all council members to receive the training, and training is to be completed within 90 days after being designated, and the training can be taken online or a class um, on the requirements of the Open Meetings Law offered by the Maryland Association of Counties through the Academy of Excellence and Local Government. Obtain a motion from council to approve resolution 13-2023. So moved. I have a motion. Second. Oh, second. Second. You're, second. You're, no, you're the motion. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. You had to get closer to that mic. <laughs> motion by uh, Councilman Baker. And we have a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion's carried. Resolution passes. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Hurley. At this time, we now open the floor for public comments. If you have public comments you'd like to make, uh, please come to the podium. Please state your name, your county of residence, and your concerns. 
Good evening. Good evening, members of the council. This is executive members of the public. My name is Scott Hamilton. I reside in Wicomico County. I'm also the president of the Fraternal Order of Police here in Wicomico County, representing over 231 active members and some retirees as well, with a total membership of about 260 members. In reference to resolution number 2-23, uh, in the continuation of the appeal of the pending lawsuit against Wicomico County by an FOP member and a retiree, I can only stress to you uh, that it is important that we continue to work together to be make the best outcome possible to resolve this situation civilly. And uh, I want to make sure that you understand that my door is open and my phone is on to work with each and every one of you to do the best job we can to ensure that everyone in this county, to include our sheriff's deputies and our police officers and our first responders, are taken care of the best way we can. Thank you. Thank you, Hamilton. Good evening, Council. I'm Darren Lombardo, Wicomico County. I wanted to come here this evening and welcome, by the way, all the new council members here. I wanted to come here to express um, I was disappointed in the last meeting as it relates to a decision that was made regarding a million dollars that this county allocated for school resource officers. So what I witnessed in the last meeting was administration sitting up front and saying that we can't use the money for SROs because they're reoccurring funds. So instead, we'd like to use it and repurpose it for things that are not necessary. We, and, and not necessary would mean backup cameras for school buses. School buses are not supposed to back up when they're on the route. I don't know if you know that. So that's a meaningless upgrade. And so there's things, and we've seen a lot of patterns over the years of bait and switch tactics with taking funding and reallocating it for something other than what it was purposed for. We have 25 schools and 10 school resource officers. Our schools are getting bad. They're really bad. And so I don't have to reiterate that. A lot of people that ran in their campaigns all pretty much said school safety is a huge issue. And so here we are today where that was seed money designed to get the ball rolling to expand our school resource officers. And repurposing it, the responsible thing would have been to hand it back to the county and then the county find a way, whether it's through other funds, through other methods, to get that to the sheriff's office. And to even if it's to have you know, four or five school resource officers over a period of three years while funding is secured until we get that long-term funding for the school system, we need to do that. And so I'm coming here tonight. We have an awesome team sitting here between the executive's office and the county council. We have an awesome team. You can fix this. We can find a way. We have to secure our schools. That's the bottom line. And uh, just wanted you to reconsider that and see whatever it is that you can do, because we absolutely need to secure our schools. Top priority. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lombardo. As a point of clarification, I don't believe the money was ever transferred from uh, school resource officers funding. It was actually an error on the part of the state of Maryland in, in um, evaluating the maintenance of effort that the county was required to pay. So once we realized that there was an error to that effect, we uh, made the decision based on the request from the Board of Education to apply those funds as they requested. If I'm correct, I don't recall it ever having been originally um, um, approved for school resource officers. Yes, what was very disappointing is that the board, the elected board, had no idea that that decision was made. So their authority was circumvented in that process. Thank you, Mr. Lombardo. Any other public comments? Good evening. My name is uh, James Atkins, Wacomco County, and I live in Mardella. I just want to take a few minutes to address and, and bring to the county uh, council some notes and attention. Uh, recently, there seems to be some activity uh, related to rebuilding Barron Creek Road in Mardella Springs. For those who don't have a lot of history on Barron Creek Road, 
It was washed out in the summer of 2016. Mm -hmm. At that time, there was an estimate given to the county to replace the road at a cost of $400,000, which would not replace the dam, but would replace the road. Replacing the dam at that time was estimated to be $3 million. Nothing happened. Uh, through two counts, uh, county executives, there was no work, no progress done on the road. And every time I would speak to someone, it was still in the planning and research stage due to the state with the Environmental Protection, Department of Natural Resources, Department of Agriculture, and just about any other department that wanted to ride down and look at it. My concern now is that we seem to be talking about replacing Barron Creek Road. And there are two homes on Barron Creek Road. One of them is mine. Uh, that home was built in the 1800s and is about 17 feet off the road. For a country road, that's not a problem. That road is a problem. Prior to it washing out and all the residents in Mardella who say they want it replaced is because it's a shortcut from Route 54 Delmar Road to Route 50. It saves them a mile to a mile and a half from going up to the stoplight. In the morning and in the evening when that road was there, you could see the high school students come out of the high school and take that shortcut. And you could see the accidents that occurred on Route 50. Now, my understanding is if we're going to replace that road, it has to be built to state specifications which means that road will be wider than it currently was, will probably be a lot smoother than it ever was from day one. And my concern besides my home is the speed limit on that road, which will not be enforced, the truck weight enforcement on that road, which will not be enforced because it never was. That road had a 16,000 pound weight limit and three axle limit on it when it was in existence. And if I had a dollar for every tractor trailer that rumbled by my front door, I wouldn't be here talking to you tonight. But nobody bothered. Another thing to think about is if you'll notice lately with the traffic concerns in this county, when you leave Salisbury heading west, Porter Mill Road at Route 50 is the only road that currently has not had to have it, something done on Route 50 to control the traffic. We're getting to be like New Jersey with jug handles. You've got to pull out, you've got to go up, make it your turn and come back. Old Railroad Road, which the state five or six years ago spent a whole lot of money widening the medium strip and doing everything it needed so my understanding now that the state's getting ready to come back and make adoptions to that road so you can't go across it, you're going to have to zigzag. So now let's move down to the next road, Barron Creek Road. Are we going to open that road back up, increase the traffic on that road so that the state can come in because there's so much traffic up there and have to do an adaption to the highway to control the traffic on it. You've sat here tonight and you've talked about the budget for the county. I don't know what the numbers are to replace Barron Creek Road. I don't think anybody in this room knows. When we get done with the environmental studies and natural resources and all the other things that have to be done, the number I keep getting told is between four and seven million dollars. Is there not something in this county that we can use four to seven million dollars on that is not a convenience or a shortcut from one road to the other? It really needs to be looked at. And like I say, there are only two residences on that road. Neither residence is in favor of the road being reopened. And I would be interested to see when the Department of Environment and the other state agencies start looking around down there 
and they see the growth of the pine trees and all the other growth that has occurred in the pond since it left, the amount of animals that have come into that area, deer, beavers, all these things, that, especially beavers that the state wants to protect. And lo and behold, right on the corner at the bottom are two pine trees which, if they're not 100 years old, they're 10 years old on either side. And there's a pair of bald eagles that love to sit up in those trees every morning. And the state's going to have to come in and cut those trees down. Uh, so I don't want to hold you up anymore with that. Uh, if anybody would like to talk to me or would like to come down and, and, and see my version of it, because there have been tours given down there during the past six years. And the funny thing about the tours that have been given down there for the past six years, the two homeowners that live on that road find out about them after they happen. Nobody wants to hear what we're looking at. So if anybody would like to talk to me later or contact me, uh, Councilman Merritt has my name and number and knows how to get a hold of me. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Atkins. Good evening. Mike Stauffer, Superintendent of Schools. Take a couple of minutes just to make sure that the community is aware of any pieces of clarification regarding uh, increasing our school resource officer division, as well as uh, one-time funding that we have received from the council at last at the last meeting. So thank you for that uh, before I get started. So a couple points of clarification. Last May, uh, early June, if you remember the maintenance of effort calculation from the state and the Department of Legislative Services were going back and forth and it ended on one number that was about a million dollars shorter than the number that the council had originally, originally budgeted for at that time. Um, that was right around the time of the Uvalde school shooting as well, almost about a week uh, difference in that time just to bring that to, to the forefront as school safety is always uh, a concern uh, and a priority for the school system as well as I know as it is for the county council and county executive and administration as well. Uh, I believe uh, a number of council members, I'm looking specifically at Councilman Joe Holloway, now had mentioned uh, what good uses for that money would be to go towards school safety and security. It was one-time funding. And it does have to be approved by uh, MSDE as one-time funding and go through eligibility criteria to be approved as well. So that list was put together for items that would uh, be eligible for that one-time funding and would be approved for MSDE, which is now currently in the process now that the document has been signed uh, by both the council and the Board of Education. We are awaiting that news. Uh, so that is the update there. As far as uh, the superintendent and the Board of Education, I am very much interested in increasing the school resource officer division. I've made that very clear both during the time that I interviewed for this position and also since then in board meetings and also to board members. That's something that we have been actively pursuing. I've met with Sheriff Lewis uh, this past summer and uh, we have coordinated a plan both with Chairman Malone uh, Sheriff Lewis and myself, we are working to increase that. He knows that, uh, Sheriff Lewis knows that he has to get that information and then uh, go through uh, the Criminal Justice Academy and recruit uh, more officers as well as increase his FTE through council approval. So that takes time. We do have a plan and I'm hopeful uh, by this time next year that we'll have five more school resource officers in our schools and we will be working to increase that each year until our plan is to hopefully have one per school over the course of the next uh, handful of years. So thank you all for your support. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to clarify any information. If you always have questions, please email, give me a call, uh, as well as any of my staff, and we will be very responsive to those questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Superintendent Stauffer. Any other public comments? <clears throat> Good
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. There we go. All right. There you are. <laughs> so a week from tomorrow, the legislative session begins, and so we'll all be up in Annapolis uh, actually a week from today. Uh, so I'm going to run down the roster of the new county delegation. we got some new faces, new names, and so let's hope I can get this right and not mention Delegate Maltz because he'll be a senator in a week. Uh, so you have Delegate Adams, Delegate Sample Hughes, Delegate Hartman, Delegate Hutchinson, Delegate Otto, and, of course, me. Um, working for the county up there during the legislative session, you all are more than welcome to come up anytime you want. I uh, always love it when folks from home come up because, you know, we're across the bridge, and anytime somebody comes across the bridge and comes spend time with us, it's like seeing my mama. Well, all right, <laughs> maybe not quite like my mama, but it's close. Uh, you know, it's, it's um, you know, when you're in that bubble, you know, for four months, you know, anytime somebody from home comes in, it's, it's a big deal. And so our office will be available anytime you're coming up, especially the county executive, because I know she'll be up uh, a week from tomorrow. She'll be up and she's coming up on a regular basis. And so we have a conference room in our office that's available for you to use as your office for anything, anything that you need. And I'll be contacting you frequently as we'll be needing letters of support for various pieces of legislation that are beyond our control, just something that we may want to be a part of or not be a part of. And uh, speaking of legislation, I know that there are local legislative ideas that have come out of the executive's office, and I know the council hasn't had a chance to go over them. And I know due to the time constraints from the election to the swearing in, to the start of the legislative session, to the bill guarantee date, which is January 20th, uh, we're going to uh, submit for drafting, which is the initial step in the bill process, all of the ideas. And then as you vet them at your next meeting, I assume, or whenever they're on the docket, uh, whatever letters of support you send up will be the ones that we actually submit. Uh, but I want to kind of get ahead. I don't want to be stuck behind the date of the 20th and then there's something we really want to work on this year, and we missed the guarantee date. So just to kind of do some homework, we'll have that ready to go. And whatever you don't agree on, uh, we'll just put it in file 13 and uh, look at it again later. So but it's going to be an exciting time. We've got a new administration. We've got new leadership. And, uh, you know, it's going to be great building new relationships to make sure we can continue the, the successes that we've had. Uh, working together uh, up in Annapolis. And so, you know, we're available, we're willing to do whatever we need to do to make sure you have the tools you need to make our lives better. So I'll be talking to you all quite frankly. I won't be in here again until April. And uh, hopefully by April I'll be, I'll lose a little weight, maybe, you know, or not, or it might be heavier. I don't know. But we're going to find out together. So I'm looking forward to it, and hopefully I'll see you all up there. All right. All right. Thank you, We're glad to have your representation in Annapolis. Very much so. Any other uh, public comments? All right. Seeing none, that concludes public comments. Uh, have to revisit, if you don't mind, uh, Resolution 02-2023. Uh, we started changing the process a little bit. When we were postponing uh, resolutions or legislation, we were always using the terminology as tabling it. So we would table something until the next meeting. Uh, for Robert's Rules of Order, tabling requires the motion, no seconds required, no discussion. But Mrs. Hurley has informed me that when we're switching, we've now switched over to the postponement, that does require a second, and it does allow for discussion. So we do have a motion from, uh, from Councilman Wynn, I believe Councilman Baker was the second on the postponement. We didn't have a second. We didn't have a second. All right. Didn't have so, a second. so what I would do is I, I'm reintroducing the uh, the resolution so that we can get a second. Make sure that if there's any discussion, we we. Um, Mr. President. We yes. I, th I think the proper process would to be asked for a motion to reconsider that resolution and then go through all Thank those formalities. Much, sir. Entertain a motion to reconsider uh, resolution number 02-2023. To move. Second. Second. Motion is second. Uh, so we are now reconsidering uh, resolution number 02-2023. Uh, we open it for discussion. Motion to postpone. There's motion to postpone. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the postponement? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion's carried. Resolution is postponed until the next county council meeting on January second. 17th. Yes. Thank you for that clarification, Ms. Hurley. I appreciate everybody's patience. Now we will open the floor uh, for uh, council comments. Any council comments? I always have one. Yes. Um, the gentleman, Scott Hamilton, I would like to talk to you uh, next, next, a phone call to you to discuss FOP. 
I know what it stands for, but I need to know what your job is and what you all do. Because I do support the police department. We do need police officers. Okay, I'll get back, I'll get back to you next week. And to the gentleman from Mardella, Mr. Atkins, I would like to get up with you. I'll get with Jeff to get the number because I do love tours. And, I, <laughs> and it scares me when State Highway comes and wants to do something. They might take your house. That's the first thing that comes to my mind, that they will take your home because they will do that. So I support keep it closed. You're 17 feet from the highway. That's close. Yes. So if they widen it, they're going to take your probably your property, you know, or, or take part of your yard, and you won't have any yard to cut. So I do want to contact you to get a, a tour, because I do love tours. And um, again, I I believe in transparency, and um, I believe in sharing information to the community. Things that I can discuss, I will definitely communicate with people and not keep it to myself. I believe um, we should share information to our constituents and make sure we share factual information because when we don't communicate, that's when confusion starts. And I'm at the age where I do not like drama. I keep it out of my home and I intend to keep it out from behind this table with me. I'll just, you'll, when you see me back away, that means I'm ready to go. So I'm just saying, I, you, I, I'm not going to agree with everybody on this table, behind this table. But I like to have, I like to make it fun and interesting and learning. So I'm going to learn from the gentleman from the FOP, and I'm going to learn from Mr. Atkins, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Shields. Any other council comments? Are we able to get any kind of information on why that was continued? Uh, I have a statement I was going to read. Okay. And I'll even let you go after me if you're not happy with what I said. <laughs> Thank so. you. Thank you, sir. Any other council comments? Under, yes, Josh. It was a happy new year to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there you go. There you go. <laughs> I forgot all about that. I have a, like a comment. I've been uh, mentioned to a lot of uh, a couple different people about the Cove Beach being an issue with the. Uh, with the riprap that they have around the beach. And uh, I've had a lot of people complain to me about that and, and they're very upset about this. They're scared it's gonna turn into Cedar Hill uh, where apparently it used to be a nice beach and, and the state went and put the same thing that they did to Cove Beach. They put riprap around it and uh, it turned into a mud pit um, pretty quick apparently. And uh, I've been blown up with pictures about uh, the beaches and uh, I, uh, uh, a comparison to Cedar Hill and Nanticoke and, and, and uh, the Cove. And it seems to me we might have to uh, look into this issue before it becomes a, a big issue. Thank you. Under presidential comments, as Shane alluded to, I, I would want to apologize for the postponement of the resolution that was on the table. We know that it's uh, many people are, are very, very anxious to see this issue come to some type of resolution, as is the council. Uh, we've had numerous discussions among each other individually. I know, spent many, many hours trying to sort of sort through all the documentation, and there's volumes of documentation. But um, there are still numerous issues we feel need to be resolved at this time. We even had a special work session one hour before this meeting to try to bring this to some resolution. Um, we received this doc these documents about two hours before our meeting. So. Uh, there's there's reason for the delay, and uh, we're hoping to still move forward. As a matter of fact, um, we will most likely have another closed work session sometime between now and our next meeting because we recognize the importance of trying to get to all the details and getting it absolutely right. So I wanted to make that comment so that everyone is rest assured that we are working on this uh, diligently. How are we doing? Okay. <laughs> all right. Good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Entertain a motion to adjourn uh, from legislative session to go into an open work session followed by a closed work sessions pursuant to the local government article section 3-305B1 and 7 as follows to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice to protect the attorney client privilege and to discuss the resignation of an employee over whom this body has jurisdiction to protect the confidentiality of the employee. That's a motion. So Who moved? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right, meeting is adjourned. Uh, this time, the first item on the uh, open work session is a presentation from Offshore Wind. Mr. Dave Wilson is here. Mr. Wilson, we're glad to have you here. 
You can the table if you like. What's that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sit, yeah, sit at the table. Yeah, please. <coughs> I think sh I did have a, uh, a short PowerPoint presentation. I think uh, Laura is uh, oh. putting up, so I may Fair. glance over there occasionally. Okay. All right. Uh, but I also want to thank uh, Council President Cannon and the rest of the uh, Wycombe Council for having me. Um, while we're waiting for her, just some uh, point of reference. I actually live in, in Worcester County, um, and I'm the Maryland Development Manager for, uh, for U.S. Wind. Orsted is our competitor, so well, the last time I'll Worcester bring them up. <laughs> so. Have you always lived in Worcester County? I lived there for 30 years, really? I, but I grew up in Pennsylvania. So um, I do own a 26-acre farm in Wicomico County. And my wife's a professor at Salisbury University, uh, so I'm here a lot. I do a lot of fishing in uh, the Nanticoke. So, but, uh, um, but uh, I'll. Uh, Laura, did you have? I do have that? the laptop. If you want me to bring it up on the laptop, it's also in the council members' brief book. Oh, it is. Okay. Yes, I'll well, tell you what. If that's the anyway. case, I'll uh, just look at it on my phone. If it's easier for you, just I apologize for glancing at my phone occasionally. So. Uh, if you can bring it up for the public, that might help. <laughs> Yeah. Laura, do we do we have do, do should we continue with the uh, work session or should we have a recess? What, how, what's the time? Probably, but good idea. Take a five minute recess. I would take a five okay. minute recess. We'll probably use yeah. that anyways. All right. <laughs> I like it. Uh, Again, uh, thank you, uh, uh, President Cannon and uh, Wicomico. Council for having me today. Again, I'm Dave Wilson. I'm the Maryland Development Manager for, for U.S. Wind. Uh, and I'm kind of doing a little bit of a road show here, giving folks an update on uh, what's going on with offshore wind, um, especially as it relates to jobs and whatnot on the eastern shore. So uh, again, I'm actually a Worcester County resident, um, but uh, do own some property here in Wicomico County. Um, just again, to give you an overview of the project, uh, the first OREC, uh, this, which is, refers to an offshore renewable energy credit given by the Public Service Commission, um, in our lease area, which is, we don't own the lease area, we, we lease the lease area, which is 80,000 acres off of Maryland. Some of you probably are aware that uh, Delaware has a lease area that Orsted uh, owns, um, uh, and that, again, is off of, of Delaware. But our lease area on uh, our recent award, uh, or actually 2017 award for Marwin is 21 turbines. And again, they're about 21 miles offshore, 21 to 27 miles offshore. Momentum Wind uh, was uh, last year's award by the Public Service Commission, which is 15 to 21 miles offshore. Uh, and the total uh, for that uh, currently would would uh, would give energy to about 430,000 homes. There's still a balance left in the lease area, which would hold about 38 turbines, but there's no more uh, OREX currently available, at least in Maryland. Now, we, you could have a, an award given by uh, another state, which we could put in our uh, lease area, uh, but right now there's, there's no more left uh, in Maryland. Again, just to give you a little bit closer view here, um, the uh, 11 miles is, again, there's no award for that yet. That's just theoretical area that we could put turbines into the uh, lease area. Currently, the closest to, sh closest to shore, again, is 15 miles with momentum wind. Um, and just to give you a sense of distance, these uh, turbines are about a mile apart north-south and about uh, eight-tenths of a mile apart east-west. So that's the configuration of these. And again, there's holes in there for wrecks and any structure offshore. So um, there, what you see there isn't perfect. There'll be some missing from there as well. There's little squares you see or, or uh, places where there may not be turbines or there'll be uh, other structures. Uh, we do have a project design envelope for, for the project and that is just what um, the construction operation plans uh, calls for, for from BOEM, from the Bureau of, of uh, Offshore and Energy Management. And that one 
we have to put a maximum what's best, what would be best for us, but probably won't happen. The, the, we could have up to 121 turbines. It's more likely that'll be 110 or so if, if the whole lease area is filled out. Uh, there are substations offshore where cables <laughs> are connected uh, from turbines. And then a turbine height of about 817 feet uh, with a theoretical turbine that doesn't actually exist, but you know, could exist, could be commercially available of 938 feet uh, as we head uh, west with the newer uh, awards. And again, Delaware, that, low, that blue line you see there is the most likely area where we would uh, connect cables onto shore. Uh, there's no cables that go into Maryland, doesn't make sense going uh, into Maryland for the grid, also because of Ocean City, uh, where <coughs> uh, my family has owned property since I was a child. Um, uh, commercial and uh, residential. And um, uh, there's also a lot of just smarter reasons to go through Delaware based on mm -hmm. topography and energy, et cetera. Uh, the cables, just so you get an idea of, of what they're like, they're buried about three to seven feet underground. Uh, they're about eight to 12 inches in diameter. Uh, there's a lot of other utilities to go through. We, we don't use up <coughs> utility rights of way because there's a, a tremendous amount of other utilities in there. Uh, we go into the beach, probably go into, you know, potentially Towers Beach in Delaware. Uh, and that would, in that case, we'd drill about 60 feet under the beach to go into the beach because it's such a dynamic area. Again, um, construction, how turbines work is, is again, I'll touch on this briefly, the Sparrows Point facility that we're uh, sort of reinvigorating the old uh, Bethlehem Steel plant in uh, Dundalk. Um, but it is great structure um, for fish and wildlife once they're built. The, uh, I'm a fisherman. Uh, some of you have fish structure uh, all summer long and in the fall in particular, not in the spring. Um, but there's a lot of excitement from some of our recreational guys about all the fishing around the monopiles. You cannot tile, you cannot tie to a monopile, but you can fish around it. We don't own the ocean. We have no control over that, but it's something we're going to encourage. There is, um, as there's a lot of stuff online that's not really accurate. There's a, it's not a huge area of, of scour protection. It's about 75 feet around each monopile. Uh, but then you have all that structure growing on the mon monopile up to the surface, which is uh, kind of nice. And again, there's no, uh, there's lots of, of uh, <coughs> systems on the, on the monopiles for, for boat detection. But for aircraft, we don't have lights on all the time. That's something that Ocean City wanted, and we were able to, to use that, you know, find the ADLS system and get it upgraded and basically have the lights off almost the entire year on the turbines at the top of the turbine, uh, except for the very, very bottom, which you can't see outside of two and a half miles. Um, so the lights on the turbines will only light up when an aircraft flies by, which would be about four hours total for the entire year, we estimate. Did you say how close you could get to the, to the pilot? Yeah, you can, you can park right next to them. You just can't tie up to them. Okay, and you can fish right. So you can way. fish right up to them. Yep, they're doing that in Virginia right now, and it's it's. There's only a couple turbines up, but it, the uh, if you go online, you can find what the turbines look like because there's some great underwater data. It's like a. It is. Those are further out, but it's. What what is it made of? Is it salt? I mean, it's, obviously the salt water. It's steel, but it's yeah, but it's protected, you know. So, we'll it's a it's a, I forget what it's. There's a there's a. Name for it, I can look up for you, but it is, they are steel monopiles and they're going to be ma manufactured at Sparrows Point in Baltimore. But um, it's the kind of steel that does not rust, and that's the key. You know, it's the non rusting. It's kind of crankbaits that I use, so <laughs> they do it on those too. <laughs> so, um, so, again, just to, to give you an idea of of how this area was created. Again, Boehm used, I think it took seven years for them to deconflict this area. Um, it, it is not inside critical whale habitat or bird habitat. Most of the, uh, Jim Rapp and I, some of you may know Jim, is a buddy of mine, he and I have been doing Del Marva birding weekends for, for 25 years now. Um, and most of this passerine migration, which is warblers, vireos, et cetera, they're migrating within 10 miles of shore. So uh, we're generally uh, good there. When we put the monopiles in, it takes, we only do one a day. 
So it takes two to four hours to actually put the monopile in, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. That's actually the easy part of the project. Um, and there's a double bubble curtain that goes around the monopile to, for noise attenuation. Uh, just to be on the safe side, though, there's, there's uh, observers on boats that are, go around the project as, things are, as the monopiles are being uh, drilled into the ground. And so um, if they see a, a whale or anything, they need to stop for at least two hours, so that's, which is critical. And again, this site is inside the federal shipping channel. If you notice, you recall the shape of it. The shipping channel is outside of the uh, the lease area, so we don't have shipping channel issues there. Um, and we did just recently give eleven million dollars to UMSEs for additional research on birds, mammals, bats, um, which we're sharing with the scientific community. Obviously, not surprisingly. And again, I want to get into all these, uh, but they're avian surveys. A lot of a lot of it through sound, which is how most of us uh, do bird watching. Uh, there's benthic surveys. Uh, there's, the benthic surveys are critical for avoiding shipwrecks, existing wrecks, mapped wrecks, which we already have, we know we're avoiding. Um, and we've been working with guys like Money Hawkins and others to make sure that we don't go through any of his uh, good uh, uh, habitat that he's put on the bottom, uh, and existing habitat there too. Uh, the last thing we'd want to do is go through even a shipwreck or something because it's good habitat and good has great historical uh, value. People talk about uh, raid impacts and employment a lot. And again, um, some of you may know that Lower Shore Workforce Alliance um, got $700,000 uh, from the Department of Labor through the uh, Maryland Works for a Win grant. I think Maryland got uh, $23 million. And uh, they're going to hire three full-time wind folks um, over there, and we're working with them to, to help direct them as to what they need, training needs, et cetera, for all the, the uh, local jobs and, and jobs elsewhere that are coming through this. We do have a, a, a full staff of minority business enterprise folks who really work hard to make sure that we, we hire businesses from underserved communities and, and women-owned businesses. And so um, Renee was going to be here tonight, couldn't be here, one of the folks who was actually from Pocomoke City. So when you say the Lower Shore Workforce Alliance is going to hire four folks, what do you mean? I mean, what are these people? What is their responsibility? Yeah, so I, I can elaborate that on the next slide. But so we, because of the, the project, is probably hire around 3,000 people, and they're there are welding needs locally. There are uh, boating captain needs locally. There are lots of hires that we are not sure that people are appropriately trained for here. And so we, those, the Lower Shore Workforce Alliance is, when we have a meeting coming up on the 24th, which actually has about 50 folks locally from Warwick, Salisbury University, from, from IBEW, uh, US, the United Steel Workers, um, to talk about how to get the Eastern Shore ready for these positions and what uh, these jobs will do. It's three jobs um, will help those entities do what they can, to get grants, grants from us, grants from others to help prepare for the jobs that are coming from this particular project and from the Delaware project. So um, that's you what this project and the Delaware project. Um, the, mm -hmm. in, your, in your presentation here, it was talking about how the landfall inter and interconnection was Delaware. Yes. I know we were working on this years ago with the Lower Shore Wind Energy Association group that we had here yep. in Salisbury. <laughs> and the whole purpose of that was to try to make sure that we could get the jobs to the local Eastern Shore of Maryland area. That's right. Now, with the interconnecting interconnectivity going to Delaware, is there do you anticipate any differences in, as far as the employment and the job yeah. opportunities locally? I mean, there. I mean, I'd like to say there'd be more. I, obviously, I'm a Maryland resident, and why come to counties in Maryland? But I'd like to see there'd be more jobs in Sussex County. But it's really, in most cases, because we'll be connecting at the Ocean City, Har we'll have a station at the Ocean City, West OC Harbor. Uh, most of these jobs are gonna be Maryland jobs. Um, the, where the cable goes in is, you know, that's contract work mostly and take basically taking the cable to PJM grid. Okay. Um, so 
<laughs> most of these jobs were Maryland jobs. Um, so, and I'm sure Orsted's jobs were Delaware jobs, but again, they're our, they're our competitor. So, you know. That's probably <laughs> because of the base that you're going to have in Ocean City. Yeah, it's because of the West Ocean City Harbor, yeah. which is on the next slide. You'll see okay. that. And again, just talk about rates. You know, with the, with the award, we cannot, by law, raise rates more than um, uh, 76 cents per household. Um, or 88 cents per household, uh, which is really would is probably going to be more like 76 cents realistically, and then less than one percent for any businesses, um, which is critical for those of us who, like myself, who also own businesses in in uh, the Lower Shore. Uh, talked about the houses a while ago. So just wrapping up here again, the maintenance facility will be in West Ocean City uh, at the West Ocean City Harbor. We'll have crews there 24 seven uh, monitoring, uh, just doing maintenance work, et cetera. Um, we'll have loading areas it's, um, and whatnot. And when we take the uh, monopiles from Sparrows Point, which I'll talk about just briefly in a second, we're gonna have to go around the whole way down around Cape Charles and then back up to this area is the only way to, to uh, get them here because they won't fit under the bridge. Um, the monopiles are they're sit upright when they're on the boats. So they don't they won't fit under the uh, the roof the uh, bridge going across the Chesapeake so Chesapeake Bay Bridge. So uh, that's a long haul, but uh, we'll get the monopiles here one way or the other. And again, there's there's speed limit restrictions and voluntary speed limit restric restrictions too for for uh, whales. This is just a a list I put on here because I even though we're hiring. There's also jobs that we're just contracting out. And this isn't a good example of some of what we'll be contracting out. It may not be US wind hires, but they'll be contracted out for a lot of the jobs you see here. Um, professional jobs, of course, but, but then you know the whole gamut of what we're, we're gonna be needing <coughs> from the Eastern Shore to get uh, this done right. Excuse me, what would you use bulldozers for? Uh, bulldozers of a couple things. They'll be, in, for Sussex County, we'll probably need some bulldozers there. I thought this was about Wicomico, I'm sorry. It is, it is about Wicomico, but uh, in terms of jobs, but not every single job will come from Wicomico County. Some will you be in Sussex County, earth Delaware. Moving on there, same, and that's what bulldozers do is move earth. So you had them on there twice, I didn't know. Oh, they are on there twice? Yeah. Okay. Well, well, you have bull bulldozers and earth. So just yeah, well, there's other earth moving equipment that might not be might bulldozers. So there are the large ones, Joe, with, with the plow underneath is an earth mover. Yeah. Bulldozer has it in front. I can't believe. I have a question. How yeah, sure. No, to apply for these jobs. Are What's that? Are bids put out for these particular jobs? Uh, probably not. I mean, this is a private business, so probably not bids. We'll probably uh, work with entities and uh, hire the folks we think are the How best. You know, to apply for these particular positions. Uh, they will once um, we we basically have a, a uh, uh, online site where you can right now at uswindinc.com, where you can put your business on there, so we can contact you regarding. Uh, hiring. So if you go to uswindinc.com, you can put your information on there, and uh, and uh, we'll in about six to eight months we'll be moving forward with with hiring. Again, Sparrows Point used to be Bethlehem Steel. Uh, we worked the, with the United Steel Workers to to. Uh, to make sure we hire mostly, I think, 80% plus union jobs at this site. And uh, we'll be, we've already, we actually own the site. It's a 90 acre site. We own it as of January 1st. And we're actually beginning construction on it. It's construction on it right now uh, as a monopile manufacturing facility. Uh, so the, the steel's gonna come in from elsewhere in the US, but then everything will be put together there. So we expect to hire at least, you know, 500 plus jobs at there to start, and this, this facility will fund all the offshore wind project, not just ours, but U.S. Wind uh, owns it. And again, outreach, you know, we, there's a lot of stuff 
online that's kind of kooky. So I make sure I come out and talk to folks about uh, what's going on. And uh, that includes the local fishermen like myself, uh, the commercial guys as well, um, uh, the tribes, of course, by law, and then state and federal agencies, which are the most fun to work with. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, um, you know, I'll continue to do this for the next four years until we were up and running around 25, 26. So that is it. Please contact me if you have any questions, comments. Uh, we may do a couple fishing trips out to Virginia uh, to their monopile site with some of our fish maritime folks. If you want to go I'm out, let me know. On that. Just, uh, <laughs> just send me an email and <laughs> we'll make sure you're involved. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, James, include me on that. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Happy to do that. <laughs> Any questions from Mr. Wilson? Is that your personal number? <laughs> it's, it's actually, they, had, they gave me a number, which was AT&T, but I live in the country in Worcester County. You can't get AT&T there. So that is my personal number. You're always welcome to call it. Thank you. Any kind of fishing, because I do all types of fishing, from blue cats to offshore to fly fishing no, in Western Maryland. Yeah. <laughs> so. Thank you very much. We're, we're looking forward to seeing it move forward. Um, and you think it will be in operation by what date? 20, uh, 25 or 26. 25 and 26. Very good. Yeah. I know we've had a lot of meetings uh, locally in reference to it. Big, you know, we have a lot of assets when you're looking at Warwick Community College, when you're looking at the Tri-County Council and the Lower Shore Workforce Alliance. A lot of people very interested <coughs> in making uh, things happen for the Eastern Shore here. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate good, that. high expectations. Yeah, I appreciate that. And you know, I I know you've probably seen in the paper our discussions with Ocean City, uh, with the mayor and council. Um, but we still we have a I have a good relationship with. With Mayor Meehan, I've known him for, I was the director of the Coastal Base Program, I've known him for 20 plus years, and um, we have an open door, and he and Terry and I talk all the time, we have monthly meetings, mm -hmm. uh, the Chamber, the, H, the Hotel Motel Restaurant Association, they've been very supportive and really, really good. Uh, just working on getting past the council, once we do that, I think we'll be in good shape. <laughs> uh, yeah. so, any other questions? No, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you.